Hey guys, what's going on? Josh here from Polymathics. And today I want to talk to you about two words that are often misunderstood. And there's a very thin gray line that separates them. Um, and so I want to identify some of the mis misnomers that people have about them. Um, one is laziness and the other is contentment, right? Um, a lot of times we find ourselves getting into a rut where we're being really lazy and it and everybody um, kind of um, portrays this in their own way everybody goes through it in their own way and struggles in their own way but um, for some people it could be really negative things like drugs or overuse of alcohol other people it might be food some people it's movies, some people it's books, some people it's video games, some people it's even, um, you know, going outside and working on mechanical stuff or maybe going fishing. And the thing is, um, when, you're, when you're being lazy, a lot of times what you're doing is you're avoiding things and you're, you're, um, there's a couple reasons why, and we could go into that. That might be a whole other video, but some of the main ones are you're you're avoiding work that you have to do, work that you don't want to do, or you're avoiding the. And this is a big one. You're trying to escape the life that you live because you're not happy with it. So you'd rather go into this fantasy world where you know you can be a hero or you can save a princess or or whatever and some people like I said they they go into drugs and food and stuff because it gives them an instant physical gratification and it and it boosts their emotions for the time the problem about all of these quote unquote lazy habits is that um, is that they're they're never fulfilling and they normally snowball into this you know circle of madness and the other thing is that you begin to resent yourself and other people um, because you're not facing the truth the reason why you're doing it now contentment on the other hand um, can be viewed very similar uh, or, or, or how, how can I say this people who are content if you were to look at them some of their behaviors mimic or are very similar to those of people who are lazy or addicted so for example um uh you know someone who has been working towards their physical goals and just got a new pr or just you know lost those final pounds or got to the um the body fat percentage that they're looking for maybe they go and they pig out you know as as a reward to themselves or maybe you know it's after a marathon or some big race um so some people might look at that and say oh well, that guy's just lazy but in reality he's content they he's met his goal and he's content with life and so he's allowing himself time to decompress um the same thing could go for um you know if you just spent the last month working on some really difficult project and it you know whether it was successful or not but hopefully it was successful um and then you decide to go out with some friends and have a drink then you know that's just that's being content right there's nothing lazy about that you're rewarding yourself um and the problem is sometimes the reason why I bring this up is sometimes people this this video is for those of us who are so driven all the time and we're constantly go 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 and we're kind of workaholics and we don't want to stop every once in a while you have to pause and allow yourself some time to enjoy the moment and um, my recommendation is to set aside specific times, specific end dates, where whenever you're finished with a certain project or whatever, you will allow yourself 
time to be content with life, to enjoy it, to live in the moment, to not care, to allow yourself to decompress so that after that you can get back on the horse and start grinding away and working towards whatever your next goal is. And um, a lot of times, um, a lot of times there's a fine line between being content and being lazy. And I'll give you a good example. One that I've probably used before, but I watch a lot of movies and I used to play a lot of video games. And, and whenever a really good one comes out, I guarantee you I, I'll be playing it. Um, and I do this for several reasons. Of course, there's still the escape factor, you know, like being able to leave and pretend that you're a hero and all this other stuff. But the thing that I realized is that I would rather be a hero in real life than in a fantasy world, whether it's a book or a movie or a video game. And that's one of the things that's kind of changed my perspectives. The other thing is, though, on the flip side, <clears throat> I, am, I, in order to become the greatest storyteller ever, you have to analyze every story you come across. The stories that people tell you in conversations, the stories that you watch on TV, the stories that you read, the stories that you play games with, even the stories that were fed as a society as to who the human race is, who Americans are. All of these stories, you have to analyze them to truly understand um, how they came about and what their purposes are. And so with that being said, I would look at uh, I would look at a lot of my my uh, relaxation techniques as a method for me to do study and immerse myself into um, you know different stories to learn and to an extent that's true but what happens is it, it can really suck you in if you're not careful so with that being said you know just think about it and identify are you being lazy or are you being content and and if you're being lazy try to find a way to you know change your perspective on things